Welcome, everyone, to Season 2 of Murder in Stratton County. The mystery saga continues with even more murder, mischief, and mayhem. Written by Elizabeth Spoon and Rylan Mason. Narrated by me, Brian Shepard. Episode 5 Lurking. Arriving at the mansion was Jack Jameson and his boyfriend, Christopher, who for now sat in the car. Jack was only familiar with Brian as they were on the same ship for the same reason, the wedding, which sadly never happened. However, arrangements were made to have the wedding here in Stratton. Still, it doesn't explain why Jack was here. Out of the corner of his eye, Darby noticed Jordan coming up the side path on his horse, Buttercup. Yes, that is a Princess Bride reference. Jordan's favorite movie growing up. Jack must have noticed as well. Mr. Prescott, there's a Mr. Jack Jameson, Jordan finished. What brings you into town? he asked, getting down from Buttercup and tying her off to the front post. Oh, I just need to talk with Brian about something. Chris and I have a flight to catch, so this will only take a few minutes. Well, let's not make you guys late then. Jordan motioned for Darby to lead the way, up and into the house. Jack, of course, was impressed by the art and sculptures that were in the foyer, let alone all the rest he admired as they continued down the hall and into the music room. Brian still fussing with the paintings on the wall when the three walked in. Hey, babe, look who's here, Jordan said as he snuck up behind Brian. Turning, Brian noticed it was Jack, here, in his house. Oh my God, Jack, how are you? Where's Christopher? I'm doing well. Chris is actually waiting in the car. Listen, I need the combination to the safe you let me use on the ship. Wait, you want me to remember that? Oh, no. You never asked for it back. It's still in there, Brian said, remembering the day they boarded. The safe was ordered in Cape Town and brought aboard during boarding. Brian bought it for his office. It was a good deal. Heavy, though. Jack happened to remember Brian watching it being loaded on board. Jack also thought it would be the perfect place to hide something. He figured Brian would understand and help him out, so he asked and Brian agreed. The safe was then brought into storage. The contents would be safe and away from prying eyes. Am I missing something? Jordan asked, looking back and forth between Brian and Jack. No, not really. Jack here asked if he could store something in the safe I had in storage. I opened it, and he placed whatever it was in there. I don't know what it is, so don't ask, Brian said, putting his hand up as he knew Jordan was about to ask. Jack, give me a minute here, he said as he paced. It wasn't that long ago. However, when you're on a sinking ship, you want off. You're not about to think about your belongings or a safe combination. And then it popped in his head, as if he could see himself turning the dial. 11, 15, 7, 22, he blurted out. That should be the combo. Wait. Wait just a minute. Tell me you're not going down there. Get Chris in here. He can't honestly be okay with this. I am taking one step at a time. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. That's all I needed. I will let Chris know you said hello. Giving him a smile and a handshake, Brian walked Jack out with Jordan. Darby slowly trailed behind, freaking out, as he knew who this was. He's seen this guy on TV. Please be safe. Nothing too outrageous, Brian said as Jack stepped out the door only to look back and give a smile. Well, that was interesting. Chris rolled down the back window. We hope to be back soon. Tell Anita I said hello. 
Your boyfriend is crazy. You know that, right? Tell me something I don't know, Chris responded as the car began to drive away, both in the back waving. Whatever he had in the bag must be important enough to go and die for it, Brian said as he closed the door. Time for rest, as Jordan was now here and Darby could leave. Jordan only stayed till Brian fell asleep, making sure to check the doors and set the alarm. He would ride Buttercup back down to his house and crash for the night. On the way down, Jordan again thought of how it would just be simpler if he just moved in with Brian. He has only recently thought of this, as it would be easier on him instead of having to leave Brian alone at night. Jordan was not here to protect him if anything was to happen. He was also surprised Brian had not said anything in passing. Maybe after the ball, Jordan thought as he made his way to the barn to return Buttercup to her stall. Maybe it would give Brian a peace of mind, knowing somebody was there with him all the time. Friday came and went without incident. After his morning meetings, Brian took the rest of the afternoon off so he could meet the planner and caterers. The music room was all set up and the food stored in the kitchen, which would be finished being dished before guests started arriving. Saturday would be for last-minute touches and a day with Jordan. Or so he thought. Babe, but Father Stan is here to see you, Jordan said as he walked into the library, startling as Brian was reading, quickly placing the book, among others, on the table next to him. Hi. Sorry, I was doing a little research. Where is he? I have him in the music room. Good, Brian said, getting up from the chair. Brian was not so much a religious man, so having to interact with Father Stan gave him the creeps. Not sure why, as he was a nice enough man. Taking his time to follow behind Brian, Jordan was quick to take a peek at the book he was reading. Last time he checked... Ryland doesn't write textbooks. Father Stan, how nice of you to drop by. You're lucky as we were just getting ready to head out, I'm afraid. Brian lied, Jordan catching that as he walked in, rolling his eyes. Well, I just wanted to stop by and make sure you had everything all set for when we break from service tomorrow. My God. Goodness, what a lovely room, Father Stan said as he looked around the room. Of course, and as you can see, I have everything well in hand. Now, if there's nothing else, we will see you in the afternoon for service. I'm so looking forward to it, Brian lied, again giving a fake smile. Don't worry, I've already taken your headphones out of the car. Jordan whispered as they walked towards the front door. Traitor, Brian responded by grabbing the keys to his car on the way out. Last time Brian had to suffer through church, he told Jordan that he would wear his headphones. No one would know. Just like wearing sunglasses so people don't know you're actually napping. Father Stan again said his goodbyes, waving as he drove away. Where are we going, anyway? Jordan asked as they stood smiling and waving. I'd like to take a ride over to the resort and see how it's getting on, now that Gemma talked me into agreeing to this. Somehow I believe that there's some bad dealings attached to this, Brian said as they both buckled up. Why do you say that? Jordan asked. Because Kevin Walker is involved. This is the only Sunday where church service is later in the afternoon. Not sure who started that tradition back in the day, yet Alice was grateful as it gave her and Shep more time to prepare for the Sunday breakfast rush. Alice remembered that Tabitha agreed to come in and help, so she should be coming in soon. It was still early. However, like Alice, Maria liked to get a head start on her prep work for the following day, 
as Maria's would be closed for the day. With church service at three, everyone would be eating up at the event tonight. So, getting to work, Maria started by taking the trash out, as she could have sworn she asked her son to do it last night. Still here, no surprise. Opening the back door, Maria headed for the dumpster at the end of the parking lot. A small parking area for those who work on the main street. So only a few park back here. Eerily quiet as dawn started to creep up, causing the street lights to go off. Closing the lid back down, Maria happened to notice a shadow standing in the trees that bordered the lot. It was the headlights of Tabitha's car that quickly got her attention as she watched her pull in and park. She looked back into the trees, but saw nothing. Maybe she was seeing things. Well, back to work. Now that Tabitha arrived, Alice was ready to start the morning as some people were already outside, waiting to read the headlines over some nice breakfast. Oh, and what a story it was. Not only did Diego run with the mayor's frightful cruise story, he also added in about the judge. Coffee flowed as readers were gobbling up every word. People knew of the sinking, yet to hear first-hand accounts from not only the mayor, yet Diego seemed to get an interview with Anita, which her accounts of that morning would have you thinking it came from a pirate movie. Morning turned into afternoon. as Old Route 11 was busy with traffic all heading to St. Mary's. The road, not any better in the summer, was lined with both sides of the streets as people parked for the service. Brian just wanted to get this over with so the ball could begin. The staff, along with the orchestra, were at the house getting everything ready. Officer Darby was there to supervise until Brian returned. After the service, there would be a two-hour window, giving people time to change and make their way up to the house. Reluctantly sitting up front with Jordan, as Father Stan would not have it any other way, Brian noticed everyone seated, along with Duchess and Anita on the other side of the aisle, whispering back and forth. God only knows what they were talking about. So far, the day has gone pretty well. Sheriff Ratchet had nothing to report. He and Marks were still going through the case, and he was waiting to hear back from Valerie Winchester. She must have learned something by now. Or was she, too, dead, like the others? He thought as, look, it's time to start singing. Thanks for listening to another episode of Murder in Stratton County. Until next time, an R. Mason Media Production, 2023.